Hi friends, in this video I'm going to talk about what's the difference between monolithic and microservice architecture. I myself worked on both the products, a product where we used our monolithic architecture and I also developed on my own a micro a product which uses a microservice architecture. So we're going to see uh, an example for both and how exactly the microservice architecture, the benefits of microservice architecture compared to monolithic. For example, let's take an uh, online store, a person, myself, I'm going to search uh, for a t-shirt, okay, in, a, in an online store and I use a monolithic online store product and I search for a t-shirt and I say, uh, I search for a t-shirt with this color and what happens like the query, the, the request goes to the, to the server and it queries from the database, business logic is applied and the it queries the database and get the results and display to me. So I have to select, for example, it, it displays 100 t-shirts and then I have to select one and then I have to check out, select the t-shirt, check out and do the payment and the, uh, and it will be like, it will be tracked for delivery. So this is how the monolithic, uh, in the monolithic uh, product architecture, it's going to work. So the problem, the more the, the, the more, more than the problem I would say the challenge here is if the number of requests or the number of users for this product if it's growing then the product with monolithic architecture might not serve the purpose it might slow down it might hang because even if you use cluster it might slow down so so that's one of the reasons like we can use my, a product which uses microservice architecture. So I'm going to explain to you, I have a uh, list down few bullet points, like what's exactly the difference between or the benefits and the challenges with the microservice architecture. If you take the first point, services are relatively small and self-contained. So let's take the same example. It's an online store. I go to this product, uh, to this online store, and search for a T-shirt. Okay, so the request will be handled by this component. When I say this component, it's a microservice running on its own process. Whether it's micro monolithic, it's running on single process or more than like sometimes two or three process maximum. Here in microservice, only for this request, like search request, it will be handled by microservices. And there is also a concept called scaling, auto scaling. When it says scaling, that, that means if the number of requests is more, it's growing. Okay, so based on the number of requests, the the search component, the search microservice can grow. Okay, so let's take this example. I'm going to search for a T-shirt. Uh, it will be handled by this search microservice. It's going to query the database, get the results, and show it. That's all. So it, it owns its own responsibility. Let's go to the next point. Services are relatively small and self-contained. That means each service, each microservice does one thing very well. It takes only one responsibility and it does that responsibility really well. Okay, for example, here search, search component will search for your query and give you the result. That's all it does, nothing much, okay? So let's go to the second point. A change to one service does not necessarily bring a change to other services. What does that mean? For example, you are going to add a feature, a new feature or any change to this microservice. It's not going to affect this delivery microservice or payment microservice. So everything is like independent. Search microservice is independent, checkout service is independent, payment is independent. So they're not going to be impacted at all, okay? so. This is the second advantage of using the microservice architecture. Then the third one, services can be deployed and scaled independently of other services or even deployed in separate containers using container technology such as Docker. You can also use Docker and can be, it can be deployed. So let's say, so you, you can build this, you can, you can check in your code it will be immediately tested and built and deployed independently without affecting the other microservices. For example, a new feature has come or some, some bug has come to the search product or, uh, or payment 
microservice. So the support team or the dev team will work on this product quickly and fix the issue there and push the changes to this pipeline. Okay. Now, when it is pushed, only these services are brought down without affecting the other services. Okay. That's what it means like services can be deployed and scaled independently. It supports build and delivery pipeline specific to a service. Yeah, you can use CI pipeline, the con continuous integration pipeline for each microservice. Okay. Services can be developed independently with possibly different languages and technology stacks, different developers, even with different organizations. Yeah, this is one of the very big advantage because one of the product which I worked, we used Java, Kotlin and Scala. So within a single team, we used three different languages. We tried out, it was really nice that we wrote three microservices with three different languages, Java, Scala and Kotlin. So that's what it means. Like you, even you can try with the different technology stack, stack. For example, Node, Java, Spring, okay, something like that. And different developers and different organizations. Even you can give one component to a different location and different business unit. So it's very easy to maintain. And each team take, owns this component, and they they take the responsibility. Portions of the system can be hot swapped without bringing down the entire application. This entire application will not be affected if I change in the checkout component. Okay, so it's it's very easy like plug and play. I can replace checkout microservice without affecting or bringing down the other microservices. And one one more point I want to tell like technology stacks like for example we want to try with Node MongoDB combination for this microservice it's possible, whereas in monolithic it's like Little, little little tricky or challenging to do that okay so more availability of a failure in one service in the system does not necessarily halt or stop the entire application so if there is any fault for this microservice the things are going to work and still you can fix it and push it testing services in isolation is easier so if there are any changes you can test your apis or endpoints properly quickly okay let's see the challenges uh, microservices we we uh, we discussed about eight benefits it doesn't mean that everything is great there are some challenges as well when you use microservice architecture what are those services may contain duplicate logic or development effort may be duplicated between multi multiple services for example search component has a logic to read from the queue and write it to S3 bucket. It, it might it might be duplicated in delivery uh, microservice also. Maybe if they come to know, then they can create a common library and start using it within the team. But it is possible that the effort might be duplicated if none of the people, none of the team members are, are discussing these common use cases, okay? So it is possible that duplicate effort can appear like between the microservices. So testing the entire entire entirety of the system is more difficult. So for example, uh, when someone logs in and search for a product and check out, so it's like uh, connecting these microservices and testing it, it's a little challenging. It's not, it doesn't mean that it's not possible. There are like uh, packed testing where you can use for integration. It is a little challenging to do it. Dividing services cleanly can be difficult and identifying the context. This is very, very important. How do you ident how do you identify that checkout system should hold these tables, should should have only these uh, tables? And what if there are common data between these two services, which is which is really, really important because you should know, you should be able to identify the boundary context. And the moment you have common data between two services, it is really tricky. It's really tricky because then it it might end up in duplicating the the data, which is really risky. So it's a challenge for really for the team and the architects dividing the services cleanly and the data as well as identifying the context. 
more of course the the fourth point is like more resources because my more microservices the moment you introduce it's going to because every every microservice has to has to own its own process run on its own process memory of course it's going to uh like you have to spend money on that the connection between services are often time often times more complex because for example search needs something from payment or payment needs something from checkout delivery recommendation so these microservices communicate between themselves so it might be challenging and more complex as well so we have to decide like which one has to contact the which service so it's little challenging so uh, i was discussing about benefits of uh, microservice architecture with my experience and the challenges as well it's a very big topic i was the, the intention of this video is like whatever i know i would like to share with you all with my all my subscribers and viewers if you like this video please click on the uh, like button if you have any comments please uh, put some comments on the comment section if you really have some more points which i missed please uh, comment it on the comment section so that the other viewers can it will be helpful for the other viewers if you have not subscribed please subscribe because i'm going to post a lot of uh, technical videos because it's my passion to teach people uh, which i've learned from others thank you so much for your time and all the best for your career thank you